Meghan Markle plans on rediscovering a healing hobby when she travels to South Africa with her husband Prince Harry and their baby Archie Harrison. The Duchess of Sussex plans on rediscovering her love of cooking in South Africa after she and Harry started having meals delivered to Frogmore Cottage, according to The Sun. The luxury meals are regularly driven from Windsor Castle to Frogmore Cottage. A source close to the royals revealed that Meghan has allegedly missed preparing food after receiving the food deliveries. The source also said Meghan would like to start preparing food again on their trip to South Africa. Meghan and Harry are planning to arrive in Cape Town with their baby Archie Harrison at 9 a.m. today. The tour will last 10 days and will involve them traveling across the country. Meghan will learn how to cook South African food at a Cape Town community center. The Duchess hopes learning to cook South African food will help heal. She is hoping the healing process of cooking will be similar to when she joined female survivors of the Grenfell fire disaster in West London at the Hub Community Kitchen last year. A royal source said, the Duchess of Sussex loves to cook, and enjoys entertaining. While they often cook for themselves, from time to time, their royal highnesses request meals from the Windsor Castle chefs, which they pay for privately. Before she was a member of the royal family, Meghan used to be a food fanatic. She even wrote recipes and tips on her blog, The Tig before she started dating Prince Harry. The couple were even in the middle of roasting a chicken when Harry proposed to Meghan in 2017. Their tour will begin in Cape Town where they will arrive with 12 other people on a BEA flight. Meghan and Archie will be staying in South Africa when Harry travels to Botswana. Angola and Malawi on Thursday. Harry will then return to Johannesburg next Tuesday where the couple will depart with five-month-old Darchi on the Wednesday. The couple will commence their trip by visiting a township just hours after they land. The Duchess of Sussex will then make a speech on the issue of gender violence after attending a workshop with youngsters from a deprived community in Cape Town. South Africa has experienced intense and widespread violence lately as several women have been murdered, with President Cyril Ramaphosa calling the situation a national emergency. Palace sources have revealed Harry and Meghan want to hit the ground running and will focus on their global charity work including the environment, conservation, education and women's rights. Yesterday it was revealed that Meghan will visit Mothers to Mothers on Wednesday in Cape Town. Mothers to Mothers is an initiative which helps mothers living with HIV. The Duke and Duchess will also meet Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Mrs Tutu during their visit. Meghan Markle, Prince Harry and baby Archie will arrive in South Africa for their first official tour as a family and one of the issues the couple will focus on is gender-based violence, as their visit follows a series of protests in South Africa against the increase in the number of women being raped and murdered. President of South Africa Madame Alessio Ramaphosa admitted the country is facing a national crisis of violence against women, and Meghan is expected to show support for those campaigning on the issue. Zintalo Lee, the Cape Town spokesperson for hashtag the total shutdown intersectional women's movement, told Sky News, I think our country is really broken, and we're not okay and I'm not sure really how we are going to receive them coming here but definitely it couldn't hurt to have someone of that profile or that magnitude to speak on the issues of gender-based violence. Talking about the impact Meghan could have, Emzo Lee added, it means the state will take us seriously, the private sector will take us seriously and in general men in South Africa will take us seriously, seeing someone as Meghan speaking against the behavior men inflict on women on a daily basis. The first engagement of the tour will be at a township in Cape Town where the Sussexes will view a workshop that teaches children about their rights, self-awareness and safety and which provides self-defense classes and female empowerment training to young girls in the community. They will then go to the District 6 Museum to learn about how they are reuniting members of the community forcibly relocated during the apartheid era, when more than more than 60,000 people were forced to leave their homes. Shayid Ajim was living there at the time and now helps those still fighting to return. Speaking about their royal visit and the painful legacy of apartheid, he said, for Prince Harry to come here, I must say, is a big step towards the what we call the healing process. If people see Harry and talk to him, maybe he will understand and identify with their plight.
He added, in regards to the history of the English, or Britain, in this country, if we speak in terms of colonialism we can't wipe that away but Harry being of a new generation can turn the tables with a gesture. With a practical and tangible gesture to say to the people of District 6, I'm here for you. President Ramaphosa on Wednesday declared feminicide a national crisis after August was recorded to be the deadliest month for crimes against women in the history of the country, with more than 30 women losing their lives. He said, there is a dark and heavy shadow across our land. Women and children are under siege. Mr. Ramaphosa described South Africa as one of the most unsafe places in world to be a woman. Thousands took to the streets at the beginning of the month dressed in black and purple to commemorate the victims amid a rate of 137 sexual offenses, mainly against women, committed on a daily basis. The government declared the state of emergency as it released a report saying one woman is murdered every three hours, with many of them being raped and assaulted prior to their death. Some 2,700 women and 1,000 children were killed by men last year while at least 100 rapes were reported every day. The most recent wave of protests was sparked by the horrific death of 19-year-old University of Cape Town student Ui Ayn Mariana. She was raped and killed inside a post office by an employee while collecting a parcel. A petition calling for the death penalty to be reinstated for those responsible for the crimes has also been signed by over 590,000 people. Mr. Ramaphosa has pledged £60 million to tackle the issue, with measures including public education, increasing sentences for perpetrators and providing better support to victims. The Duke and Duchess trip will last till October 2. They announced their trip on Instagram saying, this will be their first official tour as a family. They said they look forward to meeting as many locals as possible and will continue to raise awareness of the high-impact work local communities are doing across the Commonwealth and beyond.